Greetings, welcome back. Uh, this is a very long video. I thought I'd be able to cover fuses and flashing, but it looks like fuses are going to move on to that next episode. So let's not waste any time. We'll jump right back in. Last time we made a bare bones example using just the ATmega 328P and the essentials that it needs to run. We started by giving it power, then adding an LED so we would have something to see that it's actually running. Uh, we tied a reset pin to the 5 volt line to make sure that it's not spontaneously resetting on us. And we also added a 16 megahertz clock so that way our brain can think. Even though we did that, we're still kind of reliant on the Arduino Uno because we have no way of programming this if we wanted to change our code. If we wanted to do that, we would have to take that chip off of the breadboard, put it back on the Arduino Uno, program it over USB, pull it off, and put it back on the breadboard. So the question is, how do we do that without the Arduino Uno? Uh, before we jump into exactly how to do it without the Arduino Uno, it kind of helps to understand what the Arduino Uno is doing behind the scenes when we tell it to upload code. These two diagrams should look familiar. They're both from the first video that I did. Uh, however, we focused mostly on the data memory and where all the RAM and registers live. Uh, but now we're going to focus on the program memory and the flash, which is where your code lives. So anytime that you compile your code, it translates it from C or maybe some other language into machine code, which is just the ones and zeros that the processor understands. As soon as that's done, it just copies that entire chunk of machine code and puts it into program memory. From the program memory, the processor reads through it step by step and executes them. In order for us to reprogram it, that means that we have to take the existing program memory that's there, erase it, and then rewrite new code to it. What actually happens behind the scenes when you click on that little upload button in the Arduino IDE? You might notice at the bottom is this thing called the boot flash section. Uh, this is still part of your program memory, but it's a special section. And you can kind of notice that it doesn't have an actual start address. All we ever see here is the beginning address of all program memory, which is position zero. And then at the very bottom of all of this, we have three FFF. This boot flash section is where something called the bootloader lives. And you've probably heard about the Arduino bootloader a few times, but what does it actually do? To answer this question, we can jump to the datasheet in section 26. They describe what the bootloader program is and when it runs. The section in red talks about how the boot reset fuse can be programmed so that way when our device boots up, instead of executing code from the very beginning at address zero, we instead start wherever that bootloader is. Fuses are something that I'll talk about a little bit later, but the important thing is knowing that the default when you buy an Arduino Uno is to have this fuse set to zero. And that just means that we're starting here at the red highlighted section instead of all the way up top where our user code lives. So to break this down, we know that we're able to talk from our laptop up top or computer over a USB cable to our Arduino Uno. Our computer talks to the bootloader and tells it what it wants to do to the memory. If it asks it to erase everything, then the bootloader will execute code that erases the program memory. If it wants it to write new data, it will send the data to the bootloader and the bootloader will write that new stuff into program memory. It's actually really cool about how this works and all of the commands and they document that up in section 26.8. It's called self-programming the flash. And if you wanted to, you could technically write a program that reprograms itself when it runs. We understand now that the bootloader is what allows us to talk over a USB cable with serial to reprogram the microcontroller, but what would happen if that bootloader was gone or it was corrupted or we accidentally deleted it or maybe going back to that datasheet reference, we set our boot reset fuse to one, which means that instead of booting directly into the bootloader, we just start at the top of program memory. So if that ever happens, how do we even reprogram this thing? The data sheet describes a few ways that you can program this. Uh, before actually doing this video, I thought you could only do it over serial, but it turns out that you can do it over things like parallel as well. Serial is what I'm most familiar with, so I'm going to be covering that in this video. The section highlighted in red says that both the flash memory and EEPROM memory can be programmed using the serial SPI bus. SPI is a form of communication where it uses a clock, a data in, and a data outline. And using that, we're able to send commands to reprogram or erase or change our flash memory. The documentation on how to reprogram your chip over SPI is in the data sheet. It's about four pages if you want to read it. 
Thankfully, we don't need to know exactly how this works because people like the manufacturer or other third parties have read over this and written code and created hardware that allows us to reprogram our chip more easily. It's in the manufacturer's best interest to make sure that you have the most seamless experience possible when you're working with their microcontrollers. So whenever they release a new uh, device, they tend to release a bunch of support hardware to go with it, such as these programmers here. And as a product line matures and gets more popular, you start to find a bunch of people who go back and read the data sheets and they create their own programmers, which are either lower cost or easier to get your hands on. For the most part, they do the same thing. If you wanna go directly to the manufacturer and get one of their certified programmers, you're more than welcome to, but if you wanna save a few bucks, you can typically go with one of the off brands. Now, if you don't have one of these lying around, don't worry about it. Later in the video, I'll show you how you can program an Arduino to replicate one of these instead. Since we don't just have SPI wires hanging out of our computers, these programmers serve as the middleman to allow us to talk over USB, which our computers do have, and then take those commands and translate them into whatever is needed to program the microcontroller. This is an example of the programmer that I'll be using. Uh, on one side we have USB cable so we can connect it to our computer, and then the other side has the six pins that are essential to flashing our chip. These pins happen to have a name, which is called the ICSP pins, and it stands for In-Circuit Serial Programming. So these are the pins that are used for the serial programming method that I had in the datasheet excerpt earlier. You may have noticed these six pins on the bottom of your Arduino Uno, which is highlighted in that picture. That is what allows the factory to write the initial set of code and to program the bootloader onto the chip when it's brand new. We can use these pins to flash code directly to the microcontroller ourselves. One thing I'd like to point out is what happens when you power on your Arduino for the first time. You'll watch the built-in LED that it flickers really quick. After it flickers three times, it enters into my main program, which in this case is the blink example, but I'll do this one more time. As soon as we give it power, it blinks three times very quickly and then jumps into your main set of code. So now that's a byproduct of the Arduino bootloader. So one of the things that you'll notice is when we upload our code directly to flash memory and we overwrite that bootloader, it won't blink three times anymore when we power it on. So if you have a programmer, the only thing that you need to do is to plug it in and then connect this six pin header directly to the back of your Arduino, which is conveniently in the right order. You'll notice that everything boots up, it's powered on, and it's ready to program. Before we get started, there's one preference that I like to do. Uh, this is totally optional, but I like to see more information in the compile and upload window than just like two lines that says everything's good or nothing worked at all. So in order to do that, uh, you go up to the drop down for preferences, click on that, and then there is this spot called show verbose output during, and you can check both compilation and upload. So now whenever we compile or upload, this little window down here, I will compile. It will show some more information, which makes it way easier to debug when something goes wrong. So normally to upload code, we would go to the tools menu and select our Arduino board from this port drop down here. But since we're no longer plugging our Arduino in from the USB cable, we're not talking to it. Instead, we are talking to the programmer. And in my case, you drop down to this programmer here and I'm using an R or a USB Tiny ISP, so you would select that. As you can see here, there are a ton of different options that you can use to program your device. This is what I'm using. Once you've got that selected, instead of using this upload button right here with the arrow, we instead have to go to the sketch dropdown and hit upload using programmer. So now we can watch it's compiling, uploading, writing, reading, and everything is done. We're back here looking at the Arduino, but did it do anything? Well, let's unplug the power here and keep an eye on that LED that's flashing. When we give it power, it would normally flicker three times, but in this case, it just jumps right into the code. It doesn't do the Arduino bootloader. So by programming it in this method, we erased the Arduino bootloader. Now that we've erased the bootloader, it's not possible to program our Arduino with USB. So if you ever want to undo that change, the way that you do that is just by going to this tools drop down menu and hit burn bootloader. It will look very similar. It's pushing the bootloader back onto there and now you can program it via USB again. I mentioned earlier that you don't actually need one of these programmers in order to flash the microcontroller on another Arduino. 
what we're going to do is we're going to take a second Arduino and we're going to upload code to it that tells it that it's a programmer and that way this device will be able to upload code through the ICSP pins and flash this microcontroller. I have a yellow sticky note on this one so we can tell the two devices apart. This top one will be the programmer and the bottom one will be the device that gets programmed. So let's power on the Arduino and now we'll jump over to the code to teach it to be a programmer. There's some convenient code that already comes with the Arduino IDE which allows us to program an Arduino to be a programmer. And the way that you do that is to check out the examples. So if you go to files drop down and examples at the very bottom of the basics or the built-in ones, we see the Arduino ISP, the Arduino In Serial Programmer sketch. Make that full screen. So we don't need to read through any of this. The, you could configure it if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna use everything with the default settings. So we're gonna push this code onto our programmer or our future programmer. So let's make sure we've got our port selected correctly. This is what they look like on a Mac. If it was a Windows, you'd probably see like COM4 or COM8 or something like that. But this is the correct device and we just upload it like normal. You can see it's compiling, uploading, and everything is good. Unfortunately, our Arduino here doesn't have the convenient six pins already organized how we need it like this programmer does, so we're going to have to do some manual wiring on our end. So to do this, you will need six jumpers, and the first two are just to make sure that we can power our client. So hook up a ground pin to a ground pin, and a 5-volt pin to the 5-volt pin. At this point, our target is now powered on. If you look at the pinout for the Arduino Uno, you can see that pin 13 is the clock line. You can see that pin 12 is the master in, slave out line, and pin 11 is the master out, slave in pin. So we just need to do a one-to-one -one hookup between these two Arduinos, which means hook up the clock line, or 13 to 13. We need to hook up the master in slave out, which is pin 12 to pin 12. And the master out slave in, which is pin 11 to pin 11. So up to this point, everything has been a straight through connection. There's just one wire left, which is the reset pin. So in the last video, I talked about how we tied that reset pin up to five volts to make sure that it never resets. On our target device, there is a reset pin right here. But we're not gonna tie this to the reset pin of the other one because this device here needs to be able to toggle the pin. So you can literally plug it in anywhere, but by default, without changing the code, the Arduino ISP code uses pin 10. So on your master device, you have pins 13, 12, 11, and also pin 10. And then all of those come over to here to pin 13, 12, 11, but also the reset. Now you're all set to use an Arduino as an in-serial programmer. We're all done with the Arduino ISP code because we've already pushed this onto our programmer device, so we can close out of that and jump back to our Blink example. And this is what we want to write to our target device. So in order for us to do that, we need to go back to the Tools menu and select a new type of programmer because this time we're going to be using the Arduino that we programmed to be an ISP. So on here, don't select the Arduino ISP. You gotta go a little bit further and specifically set the Arduino as ISP, as our programmer type. Next, we want to go back to tools, go to the port, and make sure that we have our programming device selected. And this is how it knows which device is acting as our Arduino as ISP device. Now that we've got that, we just gotta go to sketch and upload using programmer. and everything's done. We can now see that our target device has its LED blinking on and off because we uploaded the blink example to it. Let's use our breadboard from the last example and put our chip back on it. We can see that we've still got the blink code so our LED is blinking. Our goal is to use a programmer to program a target, but before we can do that we do have to make one change to our circuit from before. You might remember this reset pin right here. We're directly tying it to 5 volts. One of the essential steps of programming a microcontroller over SPI is being able to toggle this back and forth between ground. So we need to remove it. 
In its place, we're going to take a resistor and pull the reset pin up to five volts. Now the value of this resistor doesn't matter too much here. I'm using a 10 kilo ohm resistor. You could probably use anything in between like two and 50 kilo ohms. I don't want to get in the technicalities of what a pull up resistor is, but effectively we need to make sure that this pin stays at five volts when nothing is connected to it. So this gives a very weak connection up to five volts to make sure that we won't reset. However, if something needs to connect to this to pull it down to ground to reset it, this won't really interfere with it too much. We're gonna wire this up in the exact same way that we did when we had an Arduino as the target. However, we're gonna to wanna to reference the pinout for the AT Mega since we don't know which pin is which. Last time we used power and ground in order to power the target. However, since we have an external power source here, we don't actually need to power it, but we do wanna make sure that our ground lines are connected so that way the signals can be compared between the target and the programmer. So all we have to do here is go somewhere on the ground rail to ground on the microcontroller. The next three wires are our SPI communication bus, which is our clock, which is pin 13 on the Arduino, which goes on to pin PB5, which is the SCK on our microcontroller, same as our LED. Pin 12 on our microcontroller is the master in slave out, or MISO, and that goes to pin PB4. And the last pin goes to pin 11, which is master out, slave in, or MOSI, which goes to PB3 on our microcontroller here. Our fifth and final wire is what toggles the reset pin. So we're gonna plug this into the same row as the pin one, our reset pin on our microcontroller. And then this is the special pin that is, they use pin 10 in that program. So right when it starts to program, it will drop this down to ground, which toggles this into the program state. And then all of the data flows over the SPI lines. Earlier, I mentioned how this green wire is our SPI clock wire, which is connected to the exact same spot as our LED. What that means is that when we're programming this and this clock pin toggles, we'll be able to watch our LED flicker really quickly as well. I'm just gonna change these to be a 100 millisecond delay instead of 1000 milliseconds. So that way when we push the new code, we'll be able to see if we actually did anything or not. So let's go ahead and save this code and we're gonna push it in the exact same way that we did before, which is by going to sketch and upload using programmer. See that our light is blinking very quickly as it pushes the new code. And now we are into the main chunk of our code where this is blinking every tenth of a second. Now that we've got it programmed, you're more than welcome to rip off all of the wires that are used for the programmer and get that out of the way and see that our code is still running just fine. I never really thought that I would be able to take one blink example and span it across four videos. And now that I'm looking at the time on this one, it looks like it's gonna bleed over into a fifth as well. So for the next video, we'll start on the fuse bits, which is what I've been talking about for a very long time. But until then, enjoy your new dangerous power of being able to program a microcontroller without any development boards. See you next time.